Hello, everyone, and welcome to our event. I am Sarah, and I'm an event planner for the Orange County Library System. I have a couple announcements before we get started. This project was made possible in part by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Also, we have started our adult summer reading program. Uh, OCLS cardholders 18 and older can participate in our adult summer reading program for the chance to win digital badges and fun prizes. We have some Starbucks prizes. We have a Wawa prize. Uh, you can register through the website uh, Beanstack, and we're going to post a link in the description down below uh, or the chat on the side, whichever it shows up in for you to register. And you do have to be an OCLS cardholder for, uh, oh no, I posted the wrong thing. Sorry, one second. My copy and paste didn't work. <laughs> All right, there it is. And okay, so thank you all so much for joining us for today's event. We have four of the authors, including the editor of Everybody Shines, an intersectional feminist, feminist YA anthology from some of today's most exciting voices celebrating body diversity and fat acceptance through short stories. So I'm going to go ahead and bring them all on screen and we'll get started. Hello, hello. 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 So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Cass, who is the editor, and she'll get us rolling. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I am Cass Newbold. I am the editor and a contributor to um, the anthology Everybody Shines. It's a book celebrating fat stories and body diversity in kid lit. And I am here today with some of the most amazing authors from this collection. Um, would you guys like to introduce yourself? <laughs> um, I'll go. I'm Rebecca Skye. Um, I am known for the Love Curse series. I don't know if you can see it behind me. Um, that started on Wattpad. And I'm really excited to be here today. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm the Zazad, <laughs> and I am the author of, I am Jamila is right here, the one in the scarf, and I am the author of The Candle and the Flame and the upcoming The Wild Ones. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Hi, <laughs> I'm Claire Khan, and I'm the author of the most recent uh, The Marvelous and a contributor to Everybody Shines. My story, Guilt Trip, is the first one you encounter in the book. I'm very excited that Mia got to open the anthology, and I'm really excited to be here. Welcome, welcome, everybody. It's so exciting. Super exciting. It's super hot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is. All of us are on the West Coast, too, huh? Yeah. Uh, so we're all enjoying so, so, the heat wave. So, roll it off. Uh, <laughs> I was well, practicing answering the questions yesterday. So I, I have some, some stuff prepared. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to ask the first one, and it is an easy one. What is intersectional body positivity and fat feminism and why is it so important in kid lit? It's a loaded question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I personally would love to hear Rebecca's answer because she's always, she always kills this question. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, okay, go Rebecca. Me? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, like intersectional body positivity is, was founded as anti-racism work fat liberation, disability justice, and trans rights. Um, and fat feminism is like the focus on obviously liberating fat bodies, but it's something for all feminists, all intersectional feminists, because it's basically the work of dismantling the falsehood that our um, worth is tied to our appearance. And so that's why I believe it's so important in Kid Lit, because I just think back to my youth and how many, um, things I kept myself from because I was afraid of what people would think about me or how they would judge me. Like I used to be a summer camp counselor and I wouldn't go swimming. I would like start fights on the dock. So people would throw me in in my jeans and my sweatshirts. And that's how I would swim because I was like, so um, not okay with myself yet. And so that's why I think it's so important, especially in kid lit. And that's why like books like this and the marvelous and um, the other F word anthology are so important. And yeah, so that's, that's my answer to dismantle um, this, this falsehood that um, our, 
our worth is associated with our appearance. Yeah, I mean, as women, without even thinking about um, fatness, we always have to strive for space. Mm -hmm. And as fat women, when we dare to take up more space than um, what what society already affords us, the patriarchy affords us, there's there's a whole another uh, stigma related to you know it's all about space because our bodies female bodies are considered fair game uh, for public consumption mm -hmm. and um discussion and objectification so and then you add a fat body in there and somehow a woman has outgrown the narrow narrow defi definitions of what uh, what society says a woman is supposed to be and god forbid a woman dares to occupy space you know mm -hmm. so i feel like fat feminism is the fight to occupy space and reclaim space that should uh, that should belong to us but just because we don't fit into this the defined spaces we're not allowed to so yeah and plus um as a woman of color being muslim is already hard enough in this society when you are a fat muslim woman then <laughs> it's a whole new ball game because mm -hmm. I, sometimes i think that fat phobia transcends race and culture culture because it mm -hmm. feels like no matter it, it, it People, fat people are um, not liked anywhere because, as I as I said, it's because of the space. I think because we dare to occupy more space than we are allowed than we are allowed to. Sorry, did I go on too long? No, never. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I have to do my obligatory snaps. So <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree. You can't have equality without body equality. And you can't feel like you're on a level playing ground when people are still judging you for your size, you know, mm -hmm. because especially because it's so prevalent within our own group of people who we're trying to equalize. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the importance of having it in Kid Lit is so very strong because we learn so much when we're young and we mm -hmm. set our morals and our deals that way and we can change them as we grow. But if we have a good base to start with, it's a lot easier to grow into that acceptance from the very beginning, not just of others, but ourselves as well. Mm -hmm. I think that that's why it's so important to give everybody that chance of saying you are okay. So be happy. <laughs> I think, let's see. Um, what was your first thought when you were asked to write a story for Everybody Shines? Well, I cheated a little bit. So I was on the ground floor when you guys like first started talking about it and I just sort of slid in those DMs like, hey, <laughs> let me write for you guys. <laughs> so. I, I think I was a bit nervous because um, it would, it would, writing for Everybody Shines would mean confronting my own traumas about, you know, my own size. And then, you know, it's, it's not something you get over just because you grow up. So yeah, at first I was hesitant and then I was like, no, you know, I don't care. I, I'm over 30. I, I am done being sorry for the way I look, you know, or the, or, or the size I am. So I said, yes, let's do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was so stoked. Cass and I were at a writing retreat when she first started talking about the idea and we just kind of like fangirled over like could you imagine like would this even would publishing even go for this and then when she's like I'm gonna do it are you in I'm like yes I'm so in and there was a lot more a string of explicit exciting words um <laughs> but yeah I I was 110 percent in and I didn't think publishing would be and um I was very surprised and very stoked that they were mm -hmm. so yeah and, and quickly too, because mm -hmm. we went on sub in late July and then Bloomsbury, um, you know, gave us an offer in what, like the beginning of October. So mm -hmm. it wasn't yeah. even a very long journey to, you know, acquiring it. Um, I think coming up with the idea, the thing that scared me the most was 
approaching people um, because that's a very hard thing to come up to somebody and say is, do you feel comfortable in writing a story about fatness, <laughs> you know? Um, and so I think that was, but I have to say the more that I did, the answers that I got were amazing because so many people wanted to, and it was such a personal experience and, and the emotions that everybody put in from their own personal experiences was very humbling. And I'm very grateful to all of you for being a part of this project. It's so, <laughs> it really does. But it was, it was a little bit scary too. Um, speaking of the stories within Everybody Shines, what inspired your story? I shall go first. <laughs> um, so I'm sure you guys have, or you ladies have had this experience, but as a fat woman, we have a very different relationship with food, especially when we are eating food in public. And I remember this, this is anecdote where my friend who's skinny, by the way, <laughs> who and I were eating in a restaurant and she is like, she has a huge appetite. Like she can, easily put down five mains by herself. So when the food was being carried out, the waiter kept on putting it in front of me. <laughs> and I'm like, hmm, it's not mine. <laughs> and then it's just, so I, I brought that, like I brought that whole relationship with food into my story of Jamila and her uh, desire to eat, her desire for flavors and how her mother, I know uh, her mother was coming from a good place, but in a bad way and um, her, her relationship with food and also the whole um, experience of her going into a, a shopping for um, clothes. Oh, I have been in stores like when I went shopping for um, desi outfits. I have been, been in that store. I know I knew exactly which store I was writing in and there's like they the shop clerks somehow think they have a right to talk about your body as if you're not there and they pronounce you unworthy of the clothes in the in the store as if as if just because you are a big woman just because you're fat you have no right to look beautiful and god forbid you think yourself and your body worth putting in a a wolf clothing in beautiful clothes. So I wanted to showcase that. Yeah, so I brought those um, experiences inside uh, into the story and I hope that if readers read that, they feel that they're not alone if they've had that same experience. Yeah, over to you, whoever wants to go next. Um, <clears throat> for me, I was a pretty like athletic, teen even though I was fat um, but being the fat athletic te teen you always get put in like the roles for the big big people like you know in basketball I was always like post even though I was shorter than all the other girls but because I was bigger you know so and um, I was just treated differently so I wanted to kind of explore what it would be like to be kind of a uh, fat kind of athlete, my character is a volunteer firefighter, mm -hmm. how, how to be like that without the fear or without holding back because of the fear, um, which I did as a teen. So in a sense, my character is the version of myself that I wish I could have been or the version, you know, that that boldness um, that that I didn't that I didn't have that I let those lies keep myself back and, and hold me back from pursuing my dreams and my goals. So um, so she, my main character is like me in the fact that she's who I wish I would have been. So for my story, I knew I wanted to focus on family mm -hmm. and just creating uh, a character who had a really strong support system, even though it was breaking a little bit. Um, so as I was, as a young adult, let's not say how old, uh, as a young adult, I was a bass player. And so I wanted to write about what that was like and the dedication I put into playing bass and give that to a character, as well as what it's like to when you when you experience those growing pains when your family, when your when your family's breaking apart because of good circumstances. You know, your your sister's getting married and she's moving out, but she's all you ever known and you're losing her to someone else. And not necessarily wanting to hate that new person, but not wanting to accept them and just putting her in a situation where she gets to realize that like, hey, this isn't my enemy. This is 
this could potentially be an ally and someone cool to add to our to our pod. So that's where that's where I came from. That's such a strong one too. My youngest is going through that this summer. Both of his siblings are going away to college. And so for the first time in his entire life, because there's a relatively large age gap between them, um, he's gonna be like an only child. And so reading your story, it definitely pulls, like I can see some of those emotions, you know, like, no, stay here with me <laughs> and being upset at whatever is taking that person away. Um, I know for myself with my story, I really focused on that feeling of being missing out on something and then like thinking about it from the age that I am now and wishing I would have gone and done the things that I really wanted to do, but was too afraid of because of my body and my size. And so, you know, in my story, uh, my main character, Bree's older sister, she's constantly inviting her to this club to go dancing. And it's my main character's favorite thing in the world is break dancing. She dances in her bedroom all the time and she's just too afraid to go to this club. And then she has this life changing event that gives her this opportunity to follow through in her dreams. And she like, a lot of bad stuff happens, but at the same time, she also has like this amazing moment with this other girl and they meet on the dance floor and sparks fly. And like, she sees her sister in a different light than she's ever seen her and her sister sees her in a different light. And I think that like, with my story, it was really just about like, pushing the thought that you are never guaranteed a tomorrow. So you have to live today because otherwise you're either going to regret it or not ever have the chance to do what you wanted to do in the first place. Um, one thing that uh, I know we've talked about before, but I want to switch it up a little bit. And the question is, you know, usually it's like, what part of you did you bring to your story? What emotions from your teenage life did you bring to the story? I know with me, it was anxiety and anger and, and fear. So what about you guys? Um, for me, it was my boundless confidence. I, <laughs> um, so like, you know, as a teen, you know, we all have our insecure phases where, you know, nobody likes me and I don't look good in this or, you know, I don't feel feminine enough, but like, and I did experience those things, but I always had, it was always just an undercurrent on top of that. I always knew who I was. I always knew what I looked like. I was always 100%, okay, fine, 95% <laughs> good with myself. And so when I write fat characters and for the character in uh, the anthology especially, that was the, that's the attitude I took was she is completely fine with being fat. She knows she's the only fat one in her family. They love her just as she is. It does not hold her back in any way, shape or form. Uh, for me, I brought I brought, brought in the same anger, and um, I think I also brought in the way Jamila always um, is self depreciating is deprecating. I never know how to say that word. Anyway, how she always puts herself down. I think it's something that we do, we unconsciously do, and like I'm not good enough. I'm not. Um, you know, I'm not beautiful enough, blah, blah. And then I brought that in and then I wanted her to confront that she's always, she's the one who's, you know, f making herself feel down because that's a lesson I learned as well is because um, sometimes you preempt the world because you think that you might as well call yourself names other than listen, listen to other people call you names because that's going to hurt less. You know, so I, I brought that in. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, for me, um, it, it was kind of like what Claire was saying about confidence despite the world telling you that you don't belong because of your body. Um, and that is something I always wished for as a teen and didn't have. So, um, I, I mean, it's, it's the learning lesson. I'm still walking in that every day and uh, trying to <laughs> take those negative voices out of my head that have been trained in me, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, that was really important. It was important to show, you know, um, fat joy despite systemic um, oppression or, or microaggressions and that sort of thing. Uh, it was important to still show confidence and joy. Mm -hmm. That is super important. 
Um, some reviews point out that the book contains many characters in nearly every story who are fat phobic. Was there any particular reason you included them in your story? Yeah. Do you want to um, go, Nafisa? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know, how do I say this? Sometimes when I was growing up, there were well-meaning friends who um, were like, who tried to comfort me. But I was like, you know what? You are skinny. You don't know what I'm going through. But then I figured, like, if you see someone going through the things that you have gone through as a reader, you might, you know, it, it makes you feel that you're not alone. It, it, it's, it's a reflection and it's a representation. And it's also empathy. You find all of that in a story because um, I know that I have found instances in a book where I have felt seen, I have felt comforted because they have gone through the same things I have gone through, though not in the same shape, but with the same emotions. So the reason I um, um, I included my fat phobic character, my characters, was basically to share that to the reader that they're not alone. Somebody else has been through what they are going through right now. Yeah. Yeah, for me, I mean, I didn't set out to write fat phobia. I just wrote for my experience as a fat person and it came because we face it every day in uh, straight out aggressions or mostly microaggressions. And then there's also the systemic piece, right? So my character is faced with the decision that her BMI is keeping her back from an opportunity she wants. And that's literally happened to me uh, many times in my life. And so I was writing from that because our world is full of fat phobia and microaggressions and a fat person cannot walk out of their door without facing those things. However, they can still have joy. They can still pursue those dreams despite all the voices telling them they can't. Um, there are things like <laughs> systemically like surgeries and opportunities for fat people that we can't have because of our size. So there is things that we're literally held back from. I mean, from something as little as a car, most people don't realize cars have weight limits. If mm -hmm. fat people go over the weight limit and they get in an accident, the insurance won't cover it. Um, schools are notorious for marking fat kids harder than thin kids. Um, in 49 of 50 states, you can be fired for being fat. Like these are things that fat people deal with every day. So fat phobia is not going away in our world anytime soon, but you can still have joy. You can still have um, moments of victory. You can still have moments of pursuing your dreams and passions and goals. And that was what was important to me to show that while fat phobia is a part of our world, it's not something that, that um, we can pretend doesn't, doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very hard to write a story, a contemporary story that doesn't show fat phobia. And, and it, it really does make a difference for like the safe places for the fat people in the story and the fat people in our world. There's very few safe places for fat people. So, um, yeah, for me, it wasn't an intentional thing. It was just a reflection of how I see the world. And that came into my mm -hmm. story. So. I think this is a really interesting question because it's a bit of a catch-22. So for my story, I didn't include any, mm -hmm. but then I get hit with the, this is unrealistic. You know, there's no way she, everyone would just accept her because she's fat. And I'm like, well, that sounds like a you problem, not a me problem. Okay, it's, <laughs> I can do what I want. Um, so, I, and I think either way, we're not going to win. And I mm -hmm. think the best route is always just to write, like Rebecca said, what's a reflection of your experiences in a fictionalized setting. Um, and I think even though reviewers have, I, I did read the reviews uh, that you're referring to where they were saying that, as we were all true to what we wanted to portray. And I think at the end of the day, that's the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think that I wasn't writing a utopian story, so I definitely didn't have it where everybody was completely at ease with everything. Mine, my story, my character, she, she mainly struggled with internalized fat phobia, um, which was something that I think that was really reflective of myself too. A lot of my worst times came from my own head as opposed to other people, I think. And um, so I tried to put that in there. But I, I do feel like this is, 
this isn't a collection of stories that are all supposed to be anti, like they're, they're stories about different experiences. And the one thing that I like to say that's so special about our collection is not, regardless of if there's fat phobia in the stories or not, none of our characters change themselves to fit the narrative. They don't go on the crash diet. They don't, you know, do whatever it is to get the relationship. They don't listen to their parents saying, don't eat this, don't eat that. They, they're still doing what they want to do. And so they change the narrative to fit themselves. And I think that in itself is so powerful, especially when you're taking things like fat phobia and the way that it can make any reader feel, whether they themselves are experiencing it or they're the ones that give people grief for being fat. And so I think that that's why there's so many volatile emotions um, mm -hmm. uh, in, in reading a collection like this. But ultimately I think that the power of the stories and the power of the main characters um, really supersedes the, you know, oh, I can't believe that you have fat phobic um, moments in the stories mm -hmm. because sometimes you need to read those to understand them, honestly. Um, but, and, and I think really everyone's gonna take something different out of the stories anyways, cause you can't please anybody. But I think that we are pleasing a lot of people with our stories. Um, who do you hope your story will reach? So my generic answer is always, I hope it reaches exactly who needs to read it, no matter who that is. Yes. What, what Claire said. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what Claire said too. But also a weird little side thing. I was raised in a very conservative Christian household. And there was a lot of fat phobia in the church. Like my church did women's group weigh-ins where they would like go and they would weigh themselves and then they would pray about their struggle with food. And that was what I was raised with. <laughs> so um, my character's father is a pastor. She's not very um, religious, but so there's that little element in there because I do think especially Christianity um, really plays into the women should be in this one kind of meek mold and should look and act a certain way. And there's no room for fat women or loud women. Um, and so for a little bit, I was addressing the, the Christian fat phobia, just a, just a tiny little bit. Um, what do you hope readers will get out of Everybody Shines and your stories? <clears throat> the understanding that fat, pe fat people, fat women have the right to exist mm -hmm. and be happy and be human as flawed and messy as, um, as a human being can be. We do not mm -hmm. need to portray, um, you know, a fat woman is always on a diet. Forget diets mm -hmm. or going to the gym. <sighs> Fat women can be comfortable with their bodies. The radical notion that a fat woman can be beautiful, you know, I, I, I want readers to go in there and be like, you know, it seems absurd when I say it that fat women are human too. <laughs> Doesn't that sound silly? It, it's we are obviously women, but it's just it's, it's like I feel like society has pushed the ideal image of a woman so what's that word so much that anything that doesn't fit is weird and so it's not even a radical notion that fat women need, have the right to be happy it just feels um i just feel like it needs to be said it needs to be accepted we're more than our bodies mm -hmm. Yeah, for me too, we are more than our bodies. And um, it breaks my heart to think about how much time I spent hating myself and how much life I wasted doing those things. Um, and I really just want readers to see themselves in a new light if they were in that headspace that I was in. You know, I want them to see that there's a myriad of fat experiences. They don't have to listen to the rules set out for fat people. Um, they don't have to listen to those lies. Um, they can they can embrace their power 
separately from what their appearance is. It doesn't matter if they're ugly or beautiful. It doesn't matter, you know, any if they're a super plus or a mid size fat, you know. Um, but that life they only get that we know of one life. So embrace it to the fullest. Um, don't let those things hold you back. Exactly. And and can I, if you don't mind, I'll add one no, more thing. Over. That people have the right to enjoy food. You know, mm -hmm. they do not have to be apologetic about eating. Mm -hmm. So you, everybody has a right to enjoy food. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah, food doesn't have morality either, right? There's not good food and bad food. There's exactly. nutritious food and less nutritious food, but it, neither of those are good or bad. Yeah. There's good taste in food, though. And yeah. Gosh, <laughs> a bummer. <laughs> Not be able to enjoy it. <laughs> uh, there's nothing as good as a good meal. Oh, my goodness. But no, seriously. And, and leaning into that a little bit, I think, like, you know, social media as a whole has such a big cloud over what people feel about themselves. Um, mm -hmm. What do you think, as far as social media goes, how does it that impact the way people in general feel about their bodies and also the way that maybe they, we as authors, take that into consideration when we're writing our stories? I mean, if you consider like, like visual social media, such as um, Instagram, um, for example, if you look up hijabis on Instagram, you will be inundated by pictures of skinny women wearing beautiful hijabs and well-dressed. But if you're looking for a fat hijabi, well, good luck to you because apparently these, they don't exist. <laughs> but I feel like, I feel like social media does push forward an ideal image that little that girls and um who are just finding out about their own identities and the way they want to portray themselves um they veer towards they, veer, they go towards because my niece she she's in grade two she's what eight and she was telling me that i am fat and i'm like child you are eight years old this is like you can be as fat as you want you can eat whatever you want you you know, and so I feel like social media is very is is responsible for a lot of things, but um, the uh, pushing forward the wrong ideal image is one of the mo more toxic ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, go ahead. No, you go. You go. Okay. Um, so it, I was actually going to address you. So, like last panel, uh, we had a question similar to this one. And, you know, I focused, the way I interpreted the question was I focused on the negative that, you know, it's really, uh, visual social media is actually like, very harmful to us as humanity and especially like the upcoming generation. And then you flipped it and said, that's how you began to find your confidence and become comfortable because you saw these examples of mm -hmm. other fat people just living their lives and being, you know, just regular beautiful selves. And I've been thinking about that ever since, honestly, because, you know, I think, um, like, I'm very, I'm very closed off. So uh, I think the way I learned to survive with my boundless confidence was to put myself in a bubble. And I didn't let anything negative infiltrate this bubble. So I've always had this confidence. I've never needed an outside force to tell me anything about myself, mm -hmm. you know. But then I realized not everyone is like me. <laughs> and, and I did go out and I started looking for the positive images of, of fat people and there, there really are a lot and it really was wonderful to see like I, I like started to tear up because there was this whole world that I never sought out because to me social media is bad and it's mm -hmm. it's not it's not always mm -hmm. there are some good posts and like I love every time you post Rebecca because you do full body shots and then you zoom mm -hmm. in on your beautiful face and your red hair is always shining and I just <laughs> you're just such a light on Instagram I love you. <laughs> Okay, I'm not gonna cry. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I, and I, I just really, I really enjoy, and it, it really touches my heart to see you, you know, the way you present yourself online and, and, and the way you have to battle trolls. And I'm really crying, oh my God. <laughs> it's so funny, I really just made a post saying, you'll never catch me crying on the internet. And here I am in the panel, <laughs> cry my eyes out because I think you're wonderful. Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna stop, but yeah, like I, 
I just wanted to acknowledge that, that you really did change the way I, I thought about social media and I've just been paying closer attention to the images that you put out and the images that other fat people put out and the kind of effect that they have on people who don't, who don't live in a bubble like I do. Mm -hmm. I think you have <laughs> no idea how much that means coming from you because I have so much respect for you. Anyways, uh, now I'm crying. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, that was what I was going to say. I think um, there is a lot of positive and um, uh, there, you have to find it though. You have to search <laughs> like, it's like Nafisa was saying, it's, it's not. And um, fat people's posts are notoriously um, shadow banned. Um, mm -hmm. if, if a fat woman wears a bikini or uh, heaven forbid lingerie, um, Instagram shadow bans them more often than not. So if you find fat influencers, please support them and follow them because they're not getting boosted as much as the thin influencers are. Um, yeah. And for me, um, with my pictures, I got to the place where I realized I was posting all my skinniest angles and I started wondering why I was doing that. And I started to challenge myself to embrace all my angles, all of me mm -hmm. and to offer all of me to, to everyone, the messy bits as well as the good bits. And it's been, um, a hard journey but a good one for for my personal growth and it really means a lot to me to hear you say that that impacted you too Claire thank you so much mm -hmm. I love you I love you guys all so much <laughs> I think being an author that sort of pushes you because I remember when I first like the, the idea that I would have to take pictures with a fan like readers I was like oh no because I wouldn't be able to choose which angle what not and then after a while you start to realize that don't they don't really care what you look like they just care that you wrote the book and then mm -hmm. that gives you a lot of you know it, it's sort of liberating mm -hmm. because somehow you're more than what you look like and that was so that was an insanely wonderful um realization to have that you could look into a camera and you could smile you could beam at a camera and not care you have like multiple chins because who mm -hmm. cares you know mm -hmm. that was that was a wonderful um to find out there's this really famous trans activist i follow and he said um that it's it's free to be hated it's like there's freedom in being hated because so many times we're just caring too much about what our other people think about us that we hold ourselves back. But if you don't care if somebody hates you, you can be your authentic self. And I was like, dang, that's, I spent way too many years caring what people thought about me. And I kind of love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what are steps that we as authors can take to help dismantle diet culture and fat phobia when it comes to positive fat representation through our writing? Gosh, I think what like, you know, like what we were, what we're trying to do with Everybody Shines is just show fat people getting to live their lives despite the fact that they're fat. Like their fatness is just a part of the story. It's not their whole story. Exactly. And, and so, not just like body, Wait, let somebody else while I get in my thoughts. <laughs> okay, I'll make it quick so you can, you can jump back in. But I would say also as a writer, don't be afraid to interrogate those feelings, that internalized fat phobia, and, and really look at your relationship with diet and food and the evolution of that relationship through your life and put that in your writing because more likely than not, someone else has had that experience and they're going to relate to what, you, what mm -hmm. you've personally experienced as well. Mm -hmm. And then, you'll, you know, gain readers that way as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, even non fat people will relate because every, especially females experience misogyny and their bodies are judged no matter what they look like. Yep. The difference between a thin person getting judged for their bodies and a fat person getting judged for their bodies is systemic oppression as well, right? Like we're, not, we're experiencing misogyny and systemic oppression where thin people are experiencing misogyny. So I do think that having more fat characters and telling more fat stories is going to help everyone. What I wanted to say was that having fat characters and fat stories that are not necessarily about the bodies themselves, but just it, it's normalizing that a person, a fat person, but a person is going on adventures, having fun, um, finding love, you know, doing, making magic. And you know, it's it's just normalizing the fact that it's a it's a person and their bodies 
may not fit, um, well, may not be thin, but they're still normal, you know? So if we have fat characters doing what they love to do, as, as Rebecca said, and normalizing that, I feel like that will go a long way, I hope, to um, show that, yeah, it's, it's hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think another way that we can help um, just creating more of a voice for everyone is by boosting voices that aren't necessarily heard yet, having been published or have, but may not have a lot of marketing behind them or just media in general behind them. I know that like just for my own personal journey, I've spent the last two years, that's all I've done is like interviewed other authors who write fat stories and live the fat experience and tried to like, you know, talk about them as much as possible. And through that, I have met so amazing, so many amazing people who are in all different stages of their writing journeys, you know, and, and it just, it really takes an entire community to get this moving to the point where you don't just find one book on the shelf that you can really connect to. And there's still so many stories that haven't made it to the shelves yet that really need to be out there in the first place. Yeah. So I think that the more that we celebrate our community and like give them space as we're creating some for ourselves, then that definitely helps to take the focus off of your own story. So that way there aren't people who are saying, that's not my experience. So therefore your story sucks, you know, <laughs> because the more that are out there, then the more. The variety. Exactly. Exactly. And, and you won't be held under such a hard microscope, I think. Mm -hmm. um, do you, do you think going along that line that publishing is doing enough to find these, vo <clears throat> these voices and also continuously um, acquire more stories from the authors who are already out there doing the work? I feel like it's doing a better job now than they used to. Um, um, Speak for Yourself by Lana Wood Johnson. Um, she, uh, she uh, the character on the covers of books, recent books, they're not always thin. I, I love the fact that there are fat characters on books. That was practically unheard of, not even five mm -hmm. years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I feel like we are moving in the right direction. So if we continue moving in this direction and see lots um, more stories of body diverse characters, I feel like we'll be changing things slowly but surely. Mm -hmm. And I also think it depends on what, um, what genre you're, you're publishing in mm -hmm. um, or what age demographic you're aiming for. So like for YA, it's becoming more normalized. Like you're mm -hmm. more likely to see mm -hmm. a fat fatness on the cover, but in adult, if it's not romance, good luck. Yeah. I mean, the romance is doing some good things in adult though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I think that's why people conflate YA and romance so much mm -hmm. is both mm -hmm. progressive, both genres are very yeah. progressive. Mm -hmm. um, and so publishing as a whole, I think has a very long way to go, but mm -hmm. YA and romance are, are doing the work and it's, it's, it's definitely mm -hmm. showing. Yeah, normally I would say publishing's not doing enough at all, but like this past month we've had seven books with fat main characters. Like, okay, here's just a handful of them. And then the month before there was Pumpkin, and there's so, like, there's so many. I Literally, I had to choose between books with fat characters because of my budget this month. I've never had to do that before. Like normally they're like, yeah, there's nothing. And this month there's like seven options, which was so wild to my brain. And I would love to see that every single month because the majority of readers are fat. Like the average North American is size 16, 18. So that means most of us are fat and yet we're so underrepresented in, in writing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I would love to see every month seven books coming out in every age bracket because I think it's so important and it's time for, for fat readers to see themselves reflected more often in works. I have to say, going back to what Nafisa was saying about um, covers and stuff, one of my favorite covers, the first time that I ever saw like a, a, a cover with a fat person just exuding happiness was your cover, Claire, if it makes you yeah, happy. Yeah, that was such a perfect cover. 
It really, it really is. illustrated. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like the fact that it yeah. was a real person um, just blew my mind to see her just smiling so brightly. And yeah, happy. so beautiful. And it really was. They found her on Instagram. We were having some trouble. They would, they did like, you know, the, um, the go sees that models usually uh, do, and they had the models come in and it just wasn't working out. And so the art director just went on Instagram and searched and found her and said, Hey, can we buy your picture? We think you're beautiful. And then that's how that's it happened. Awesome. That's so cool. Also, Sandia Manon's uh, something about Sweetie. That yeah. is a big smile. I was like, finally, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a but, like, it makes such a difference to just even yeah. be on the cover, just like. Yeah. And exude like smiling happily. Mm -hmm. I mean, that was yeah. such a big thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. I can't wait for the day we get to see a YA couple like kissing on the cover and they're both fat. That would be amazing. Has that happened yet? I think it's happened in adult. Is Olivia Dade's got a kissing one, doesn't she? Definitely, yeah, definitely in uh, adult rom coms, but I don't think in YA yet. Mm -mm. No, I don't mm -hmm. think so. If you're listening, publishing, these mm -hmm. are the covers you want. <laughs> um, we still have a little bit of time. So I'm also going to ask you the question that you've all heard before, either on the podcast or in other events. What tropes, characters, stories, or movies would you like to see redone with the fat character? Oh, goodness. Oh, you know how in fantasy there's this trope of the special one? Like the the one who the girl who gets the powers, and you know who changes the world. I want mm -hmm. I want a fat character to be the one as the snowflake, <laughs> and have so much power because power is something that fat women generally don't have. Mm -hmm. So I would I, like to see that. I think so Sarah great. Hollow's book, Ho Hollowell's book, coming out. The Darkest Forest or something. It's a fantasy. I'm pretty sure you might get your wish with that book. Oh. I've heard nothing but good things about it, too. So yes. check that one out. But oh. yes. Well, I got my wish, too, for Action Hero with Eat Your Heart Out by Kelly DeVos. Mm -hmm. with a zombie mm -hmm. novel and uh, takes place at a fat camp. So that was great. Um, but yeah, it was she was. There were it was multi point of view, but the fat character was the, uh, the one on the cover was the main kind of like centered around her a little bit uh but yeah she was an action hero throughout that whole book her and her baseball bat so it was really great and i think what i want next since we're you know we're taking orders here um <laughs> I, I, would, <laughs> I really want a fat villain done well mm. yeah. like yeah. i I want or an anti-hero. I'll take either, but just someone who is just so fed up with the world that they have decided to take the villainous route, but believe wholeheartedly in their villainy. Like you are rooting for them. Like, yeah, maybe we do deserve to die. Okay, sure. Like I want to tell him that villain so bad. You, you remind me of Ursula and because how, how much yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, that would be since like 1988 it's time I know. somebody write that story can you write it please Claire I could try yeah. but <laughs> yeah, I, I, I want to read it I want to be the reader I, I have okay. a secret project that is exactly that Claire so Ooh. <laughs> can we hear anything more than secret project is there eyeball emojis <laughs> I've been reading these uh, Chinese web novels where the main character transmigrates into a book and usually as the villain. So if Thank somebody you. could write, <laughs> somebody That's waking awesome. up as a as a historical villain, as a very fa infamous villain, and then realizing, oh, yes, I can do as much, you know, I can add as much, bring as much chaos as I want because I'm a villain. That would be so cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've always wanted to write a fat poison ivy. So oh. that's kind of a villain. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be amazing. Yeah. Also, Kelly's book comes out at the end of this month, right? Not this Tuesday. Or is it coming up this Tuesday? Is it going to be? Yeah. And this is the best book for month for fat books in the history of month. Yeah. How is this the last yeah. week of June already? This is true. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe I, I have a book coming out in one month. And I can't mm -hmm. even 
enjoy it because I am on deadline for another book. And I'm like, oh, no. what's wrong? And then there's this heat wave. Everybody has to buy the wild ones. Yes. Thanks. And the marvelous. Yes. yes. Where's yes. my camera? Yes. Yes, yes. And everybody um, shines. Yes. Everybody shines. <laughs> yes. Um, what's I only got the you haven't gotten your hard copy. They haven't it hasn't gotten to you yet. Or did did you get it, Rebecca? I did it. Well, I did get mine yesterday, and my mom stole it. So oh. Oh. <laughs> I got mine yesterday too. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys got it. <laughs> um, what steps can publishing take in regards to the underrepresentation of body diversity? And this is, you know, covers the whole. Spectrum I think I've already answered that. To give mm -hmm. more people who are writing books with fat characters and about fat characters a place to republish them, you know? Mm -hmm. Just, I, I'd like to add a little bit to that too and also say more um, fat characters that maybe have disabilities. Yes. Um, I know that They're that trying. is so, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, Yeah, like really hard to find. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and definitely. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, I, I think with as many, you know, books that we were celebrating coming out this month, there still is such a large gap mm -hmm. in, yeah. in um, a variety of stories yeah. being told. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, hmm? uh, Sarah says we have a question. Oh, oh, okay. Dun, 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 dun. <clears throat> okay. The word fat has such a negative connotation. Would another word suffice? Big bone, chunky, fluffy, or is it more accepting to change the narrative of the word fat to mean something positive? I would hate to be called chunky and fluffy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I hate. I refuse. <laughs> Ooh, no. No, <laughs> just, oh, no. Yeah. And I think instead of changing it to something positive, I think we need to change it to something neutral. neutral yeah. It's a descriptive mm -hmm. word. It, yeah. It's not good or bad, it's just a description. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, <laughs> sorry, go no, ahead. You, you go ahead. No, it was, it's like, when I was a kid, they used to call us, they called me kaddu, which means a pumpkin, which is basically just, just a pumpkin, right? But the negative connotation. So you realize that, you can use so many other words to mean fat. I'd much rather just be called fat instead of, mm -hmm. you know, because, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather just be called fat rather than big boned. Mm -hmm. I'm the same. Yeah. Uh, it took me a long time to come to terms with fat because I did use it to weaponize um, attacks at myself for a long mm -hmm. time. But mm -hmm. it is, it's just a word. It's just a descriptive word. It has no, it's not, there's no morality attached to it. You're not good or bad. That is not good or bad. Thin is not good or bad. Um, and I think the more we use it neutrally, like Claire was saying, the, the more it takes away that power um, mm -hmm. and the more we can reclaim it as something, you know, that we identify with that doesn't have that um, yeah. negative connotation. So, yeah. But if you're writing a book and you don't want to write every third word, your character is fat, you can be creative. You could you can be creative like she's thick thighed, she has a big ass. I don't know. But you can but don't feel afraid to say the word fat. It's not an insulting word. Yeah, no. And just from a craft standpoint, once mm -hmm. you've said your character is fat, yeah. you don't have to keep saying it. Yeah. yeah. You really will remember. So it's, mm -hmm. I, I think when I read books written by people who aren't necessarily identifiable as fat, that's a very common thing I encounter is they have mm -hmm. to make sure you know that you mm -hmm. don't forget. And so like every other paragraph they're describing their bodies and it's like, who thinks about themselves that constantly? Like, is a person like, once is enough. Mm. Oh, I got you. It's like a man writing, trying to write a woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true, though. That was a great note to end on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, thank you all so much for coming today and, and having this conversation. It was a great conversation. Thank you for um, those viewers tuning in and anyone who's watching the replay, of course, as well. Um, I do want to mention, though, if you enjoyed this conversation and you'd like to hear more like it, make sure you check out Cass's 
podcast, Fat Like Me, where she has interviewed all kinds of authors um, with similar mm -hmm. kind of subjects. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's everyone, everything. <laughs> Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. For you. Us. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the Thank authors you so much for, for having us. us. Thank and you. yeah, check out Everybody Shines. If you scroll up in the chat, I posted a link to both the bookshop link to buy it and also the Orange County Library Systems record link. So if you have an OCLS card, you can check it out from the library as well. Yes, uh, do it. Thank you guys for having us, by the way. Yeah, like, of course. We yeah, need more conversations like this, and it means a lot that you're giving us the space to do it. Yeah. And it's so good seeing your face, Sarah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So um, if y'all just stick around for a minute, I'm going to um, end the broadcast and we'll chat in a bit. Oh, gosh. There's fireworks in my neighborhood now. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to find out when we have new fun and informative videos for you. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.